Good morning, everybody. I'm so excited to come to you because I get to answer a question, one of your questions. And it's dealing with a post that I made on Facebook. And in this post, it was a picture of an adult man or and a, a child. Well, the adult man had a bunch of holes in him. Just, you could see he was just riddled with holes. And then the child was whole. It, there was no holes in him. And the question was, is this a good thing or a bad thing? And my answer was, yes, it's good and bad. And I wanted to go into this further. Now, as a child, of course, as parents, we need to protect them. We need to shield them. We need to care for them. We need to guard them from any harm, any problems that could come up. The problem comes though when we are hovering and trying to protect them from every little thing. Now there's definitely things that you need to stand in the way, you need to take the hole. You need to, to get pierced. But there's other times that we need to allow the child to experience the consequence that comes from choices and behaviors. But it needs to be relative to their age. So obviously if my child, let's say it's a two-year-old, and let's say I have a hot stove. Obviously the child doesn't know that it's hot yet. So it's my job as a parent to protect him or her and to you know, guard from the, the oven, the hot oven. And if needs be, you know, grab it and possibly if, you know, the child is reaching out to touch it, sticking my hand underneath and taking the chance that possibly the back of my hand would get burned to help move him out of the way. So that's receiving a hole. But this image of the man with holes in him and the child that is holed, I took it in a different route. I was talking about the emotion. I was talking about the, the mental and spiritual. And what I mean by yes, it's good and bad is it's good for you to take on that emotion as a parent to help the child along if you learn how to get rid of it yourself. If you don't, you actually are not functioning at your highest level as a parent and actually will lose patience and get frustrated with the child. And then you actually start creating some of the holes in the child itself. Not intentionally, but unintentionally because you can't handle your own stuff on top of your child. So I've got a little illustration here that I'm going to talk about. In this illustration, I have the child. It's that same graphic that we talked about. You have the, the man with all the holes and the child that is whole. There's no holes in him. And let's say this represents this red dot out to the side. So this is an emotion. Now this emotion could come from, let's say it's a friend. And I'm gonna use my daughter for example. My daughter, when she was in grade school, she, let's see, so she was about seven, eight years old. She had a lot of friends. And all, all of these friends, they always got together and would do things, and especially one of them. I mean, they always would hang out. They would do things together. Just a great group of friends. Well, there was another girl that moved in to this group. And for whatever reason, she had a hard time with my daughter. Her and my daughter just did not get along. Well, this girl that moved in, she formed a club. And that club was I Hate Jaden Club. To be part of this club, 
All you had to do was say, I hate Jaden, and not talk to her at school, and you're part of the club. Well, here's my daughter. My daughter's name is Jaden. She was part of this whole group. Unfortunately, this girl that just moved in had a lot of influence. And she persuaded all this group to join her club. To join this I Hate Jaden club. Well, as a parent, I was fuming. And we went and we talked to the this girl's parents, uh, excuse me, one of the friends here, one of the good friends that she would always hang out with, we went and talked to her parents. And her mom just said, well, that's just what girls do. I was flabbergasted. I, I couldn't believe that she didn't try to rectify, didn't have the girl apologize. I mean, nothing, nothing. In that instance, this is where the parent should have allowed the child to, to take a hole. Not to wound him forever, but then to take that hole and then process it, learn to get rid of it. But not just say, oh, that's just what girls do. I, I, I just couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. I was completely just flabbergasted. Well, in, from my daughter's standpoint, I took the hole. She, she took it. So my daughter took it here. But then I said, you know, let me have it. And I took that hole. So I put it inside of me. And I told her, I said, you know, you're an amazing young lady. This group of friends obviously they weren't friends matter of fact you don't want friends kind of like that and i did everything i can so and i didn't take the the full complete emotion i can't i don't have that much power in that situation in that circumstance i would have if i could have absolutely but i couldn't but I did do what I could do. And that was, I comforted her. I told her how amazing she was. And I took as much as I could. But with this emotion that I carried from her, so it went to her, then I took as much as I could. She got rid of as much as she could with what she knew how to do. And I took this emotion. Well, now this emotion compounded. I was mad at the, I was, I was upset with the parent. Oh, she, I just, I, every time I saw her, I just wanted to slap her. Every time I thought about her daughter, I wanted to spank her. I, I was just so angry, so frustrated, so emotionally in, I want to fix this physically realm. Which, as a man, that's a lot how we turn. We turn to a physical thing. I never did strike. I never did even confront her further about this issue again. But these are still the emotions that were inside of me. Yeah, and you may have similar emotions with something that may happen. Where the emotions there, the anger, the thoughts, the, you know, I want to blow up their house to, I want to... You know, may they be infested with a thousand bugs. You know, whatever it is, these thoughts are still there. So you've taken that hole. You've taken part of that hole as much as you could from that. And as your child is doing its healing process, you have to also do your healing process. The problem comes when we allow those holes to riddle us and to stay inside and not fill them up. In this image, there's just a bunch of holes. Well, we've got to fill those holes with something. And if we don't fill it intentionally with good things and positive things, 
then we pick up the negative things. It is so much easier to pick up the negative things. It is so much easier to think, I'm gonna go grab a box of eggs, and I'm gonna go throw the eggs, I'm gonna egg our house, egg our car, I'm gonna toilet paper, house. I mean, I, these are the thoughts that were going through my head. And it's so much easier to just do that really quick. And the more I did, man, that emotion started to travel and gave me actually even more holes. Get, I, I was just boom, 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 boom. Well, that's where when I say yes to it's okay, this picture is good and bad. It's good to help absorb and take as much as you can in a situation where it warrants it. And in this situation, it warrants. She didn't do anything wrong. It was just this girl that formed an I Hate Jaden Club. Well, so now what I've got to do is I've got to take my emotion and I've got to let it go. And we've talked about all kinds of ways to let it go. Journaling, to get out there and to pound sticks, to, you know, music. I mean, just all kinds of things. you got to let go. Writing it down, tearing it up, shredding it, breaking glass, throwing rocks, all kinds of techniques to let it go. But I've got to let it go. Then I've got to build. You've got to build. You've got to create that fortress, that house that protects you. You have to put that salve on to help heal those wounds. You don't keep those holes in you. A hole comes in and you fill it with something good. And when you build at that point, remember, whatever you do, when you let go of something, you build for double the amount. And so I would build plot times two. So I'm letting go of this emotion. So I let it go by throwing it in the trash or burning it or ripping it. And then I got to build. In this transition, this is where it's critical. This building portion is critical. Because now instead of leaving that hole with that negative, I start to fill with positive. I start to get rid of the red negative and fill with a positive. And I start replacing and putting that barrier on me to protect myself and to protect my children. You want to build so that you're protecting yourself. You are shielding yourself also from the negative influence. Because if you don't, then you have a heightened emotional state. You have, if you're a cup and you're filled with emotion, you start to pour over onto the smaller cups and they pour over and it just keeps pouring and pouring and pouring because you haven't learned to manage this. But if you build yourself and you protect yourself and you keep your cup empty, then you have a lot that you can fill. You have a lot that you can share. You have a lot that you can give and to help support your child. It is good to protect your child from the emotion if you know how to let go of it yourself. It is better that when your child gets this emotion or something happens, that you teach them how to let go of it and you let go of it. Because when our children are harmed or upset or hurt in any way, we get defensive. We, we bring out the bear in us. And that's how I was with my daughter. When that happened, oh, I was so mad. I was so, I couldn't believe people could be so cruel. But yet they were. And I had to let go of that. And I had my daughter, she had to learn to let go of it. And it's taken her 18 years. No, actually, she's not. It's taken her about 15 years to finally learn to let go of this. This was affecting her even up till she's 19 years old now.
And this has been affecting her all those years. And I didn't know all of this knowledge that I'm sharing with you now back then. I knew, I knew a lot to be able to, to help her you know, as a parent and to support, but I didn't know this let go techniques and stuff that I've learned for the years since then. And man, it's powerful. She's finally able to start moving forward and recognizing how this incident that happened when she was in sec first, second grade was affecting her still today. Second grade to now she's graduated. All those years, this affected her. And that's why it's also kind of affected me until I learned how to let go of these emotions. Because I still, I saw the lady, well, it's probably been a couple, well, maybe about a year ago, two years ago in the store. And instead of walking up and saying hi and greeting her, I was like, oh, you, you're dirty. And I had those negative feelings. And I was like, whoa, Tony, you still got a hole in you. You've got a hole filled with anger. And so I had to go through and process it myself. I had to let go of this anger and get it out, build myself up so I could replace it. And then I intentionally drove to her house so I could see if there was anything left, if there was any motion there. And then I intentionally went there on another time to see if there was any emotion there, anything built up. And there wasn't. I was just like, well, that was a bad experience. It was a learning experience. But it's helped my daughter to be more compassionate, more caring, more loving, to be more the friend she wants to be. So there's always good, and we find the lessons learned so that we can be even that much better. So now, how this relates once they get a little bit older and they start kind of creating some of that emotional drama and they start creating some of the, the hurt in other people and then it's returned and then they hurt. This is where you need to step back as a parent and say, wow, you know what? That's going to be tough. But you know what? I have full confidence in you. You are so smart. You can do hard things, and this is going to be a hard thing, but you can do it. I'm here to help you any way I can, but you're, you're going to have to solve this one on your own. Well, you're going to get kicked back from a child. No, but you need to help me. You need to do this. You need to do that. Like, oh, those are great ideas. Those are phenomenal ideas that you just gave me. And I think you could implement those. Those are great ideas. See, I told you, you were, you were just so smart. I'll, I'll help you call the person if, and hand you the phone if you want me to help that way. I'll even sit right here and encourage and support you by your side. But you need to do this. And you allow them to accept that whole for lack of a better term, since that's what we're talking about here. And then you allow them to let go of that emotion. And then you allow them to build and fill it so that it makes them a better person. That's where this is not okay. To where the parent takes all the responsibility. The parent takes the, all the pain, the grief, the sorrow. They need to know how to manage that. They need to know how to handle that. And then it even increases more. So this is as a teenager. Then once they get out of high school, and once they're really out there on their own, you really got to let them fly. And it's hard. It's hard sometimes. And you, your child will call you and say, Oh man, this is going on. This is a problem. Can you help me out? Can you can you do this? Can you do that? It's like, wow, you know what? I really could. But you wouldn't learn anything from that. 
I, I know you're, you're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. I know you'll come up with a solution. You're so smart. I love you. You can come and talk to me about it and I can help process and think of some other ideas for you if you want. But you've got this. And we encourage, we support, we love, and we connect with them that way. But we don't take it. We don't take that bullet. We don't take that hole. We allow them to take it so that it makes them even a better person. It helps them to be the best them possible. And that's when we've got to step back and stop enabling them. Stop letting them stay at home all day long. Stop allowing them to to camp out and not take on responsibility. We've got to stop enabling. And my daughter, when she first graduated, she got out and I said, okay, we've told you when you turn 18, you either need to do X, you need to do Y, or you need to do Z. You need to move out, you need to go do a mission, or you need to uh, go to college. Those are the options. But why can't I stay home? I love it here. Like, yeah, I know. I'm so glad that you love it here. Thank you. That makes me feel so good. Like I've done something right. Thank you. I said, but you can stay here for a couple months. And then that'll give you enough time to find a place that you can be out on your own. And you'll be able to start living your life and flying. You'll be able to learn some of that responsibility and that excitement of being on your own. But she didn't want to. And she, would, she sat home for a while. And I just flat out told her, I said, you need to be working and finding your place to stay or you need to do something to, to move on. You only have one more month. We went through this process and then she decided she was going to go nanny. And this is the same daughter. I love Jaden. She's, she's a phenomenal young lady and she's learned a lot, but we did have to kind of push her out. And that's where parents need to do the same thing. They need to stop taking on the responsibility that the child has. Even though they're your child, even though they'll always be your child, they are an adult and you need to treat them as such. And they need to accept these holes and fill them properly and let go of them properly. And you encourage and you support and you love them in this process, but you don't take those holes on anymore. Those are theirs. So I hope you enjoyed this. Please look at your relationships right now, the relationships you have with your children. Evaluate. Are you pleased with where they're at? If you had a magic wand and you could wave it, a realistic magic wand, well, something that really can happen, and you could wave it and it could happen today, what would you want your child to be doing? Where would they be? How would they be acting? What would be going on? How would you be acting? How would your, your spouse be? How would your rest of your children, if you have more children, how, how would life be with that realistic magic wand? That realistic magic wand, that's what I help do. I help you to wave that realistic magic wand and to create that life that is one of love, passion, excitement, energy. That's what I do. I help coach you through that process so that you can have the life that you really want. You are amazing. Believe it. Have a fantastic day. Well, really quick, I just finished doing that video. And as I was looking at the image again, something else just came to me that I just thought was complete insight. 
And when we have that image of us with all of those holes in us and our child is not, that also could represent the past that you've gone through. All the the hurt, the pain, and the suffering that you've gone through so that you can help share that wisdom with your child so that you can help build them up. But you've got to know how. You've got to know how to let go of that. You have to know how to process that emotion. You have to know how to heal those wounds, those holes that are inside of you from the trauma and the pains that you've experienced in your life. So that was... That was just another insight that I had right immediately that I had.